cheer louder. The audience won't be able to hear you. Let's try it again. I am Cyrano de Bergerac. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why we even bother rehearsing. Louder! Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's better. You fool! We shall all die! It is ten to one against us! Lay down your numbers. And tell you, I am Cyrano of the Bergerac! Popinjay! Hop! Sheet! Who goes there? It's the carriage! What? A carriage! What? A coach! Oh. What? In the camp? Look! Tis Roxanne! <laughs> she brings supplies! It's a law after piping her bread! <laughs> a bottle of wine! Oh. <laughs> and chicken! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> law? No? That was the Comte de la Guiche who insulted! Stop trying to be the three musketeers in one! And what would you have me do, huh? Seek for the patronage of some great man? And like a creeping vine on a tall tree, crawl upward when I cannot stand alone? No, thank you. My God, I see your talent at a dog show. Dedicate as others do? Oh, you hard brokers. Be up for food in the fire hole. Every night, some cold drink. Eat a toad for breakfast every morning? Where are my belly groveling in the dust? No, I thank you, and again, I thank you, no. But to sing, to laugh, to dream, to walk in my own way and be alone, free with an eye to see things as they are. Grandma! To travel any road under the sun. Grandma! Nor doubt. If fame or fortune. Grandma! Oh, no! Oh, no! Hi, it's a little darling. Yeah. Oh, what a surprise. Oh, oh, come around here. Let me look at you. Oh, darling, you get more beautiful every day. Oh, you look adorable. So do you. What? So do you. You look great. I'm afraid you're going to have to speak up, dear. Grandma, can I please get you your hearing aid? No, thank you, darling. I'm not in the mood. <laughs> oh, I miss you terribly, honey. It's not the same here without you. I miss you too, Grandma. Hey, how is the tour going? Do you like buffalo? No, I don't. It stinks. If it wasn't named for an animal, it would have absolutely nothing going for me. Oh, darling, I don't mind so much for myself. But it is a big come down for your mother. She used to play Broadway in the 40s, you know. And then your father dragged her down to his level. Grandma. Oh, revival of tired old place. B movie. You should have heard him doing Cyrano just now at the dress rehearsal. The man's a walking ham. They should stick clothes in him and serve him up with pine. <laughs> Grandma, listen. I have a surprise for you. I'm getting married. Oh, oh, oh I'm so happy for you, darling. I know you and Paul were made for each other. Grandma, it's not Paul. Oh, the boy has spoke. Grandma, it's not Paul. Paul and I broke up. It isn't Paul? No. Well, that's a mistake. You two look ravishing together on stage. Why, why you could do all of the great couples. Grandma, I'm not an actress anymore. I'm in advertising. Yes, I know, and it is revolting. But, but don't you remember the talk we had at Christmas? No. Oh, Grandma, listen. This is your life, and Mother and Dad's. I'm very proud of you, but I want something different, something that doesn't drive me crazy all the time. Does that make any sense? Darling, can I tell you something? Sure. I haven't heard a word you said. <laughs> Grandma, can I please get you your hearing aid? All right, dear, one glass. <laughs> but, but before you go, young lady, I'd like you to sit down and, and listen to me. The theater may be dying. The glamorous invalid may be crawling through the desert with but one.
one lung in its feeble breast. But it is still breathing, and it's all we've got. It is our lifeline to humanity. Without it, we'd all be Republicans. <laughs> well, I've been very, very tired now, darling, and I'm going to go up and lie down. <coughs> but I am so glad, and it's so wonderful that you're back. Grandma! I love you!
love just with one inch. The land shall spout blood like a fountain. Oh, no, no, Nor did I. 
something, nor do I care to, may you rot in hell. Oh, I can see it now. The Scarlet Pimpernel goes to Washington. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh God. George, sit yeah. back, I'll rub you. You realize they started filming yesterday, don't you? Mm -hmm. At this very moment, the cameras are rolling. And Ronald Coleman is wearing my tights. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> Let them have their Ronald <sighs> Coleman and their Greer Garson. Who oh. gives a damn? You're right. I'm sure Miss Garson will do a perfectly adequate job. You're right. That's the sort of thing they want. <laughs> Stupid little bitch. <laughs>
She's pretty. Um, wholesome. Wholesome. Wholesome isn't the word. She could give milk. <laughs> Charlotte had, uh, have you talked to Roz lately? Yes. I talked to her last Sunday. Yeah, and? Oh, I brought up your name. Yeah, and? Well, she started what? to. What? Scream. <laughs> oh, I just never understood why the two of you broke up. She wanted me to give up the theater so she could lead in your millet. Can you imagine anyone in your family being normal? <laughs> Wonderful. 
couple of the most beautiful actors that ever lived. Please do come in. <laughs> Hi, I'm Charlotte Hay. Hi, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, oh my god. Knock, knock. Oh, Richard! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. <laughs> How do you do, Richard Maynard? And you are? I wouldn't ask him that. <laughs> Actually, it's a trick question. <laughs> are you famous too? No, but apparently I remind some people of Loretta Young. Richard is our lawyer and represents every major star in Hollywood. Wow. <laughs> Who's your favorite, besides Charlotte, of course? Uh, Esther Williams. Uh, you know her. I taught her the backstroke. <laughs> wow! Oh. 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 Do you think you could come back another time? Oh, sure, oh, sure. She's a stunning medium. Whoever it is you think you are. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I was sitting in my office this morning, making a great deal of money, as usual, and I suddenly realized I was terribly poor. Oh. So I thought, what can I do to cheer myself up? I considered raising my billing rate, that usually works, but I thought, no, I'd much rather take Charlotte to lunch. Oh, Richard. So, you flew here all the way from New York City. My arms are still tired. <laughs> oh, Richard, you are a darling. And I accept, as a matter of fact, I could use some cheering up. Oh, what has the ogre done to you this time? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just tired. Well, of course you're tired. It's inhuman the way he drags you around from one city to another. Oh, to make matters worse, I just found out we're not meeting our payroll. Yes, I know. You do? It's quite serious. I've been telling George for months to cut down on expenses. I, is there anything I can do? We could do a movie, or better yet, some television. We could do another play. Pick Manly and always make sure. Charlotte, money. hello in there. It's 1953. The road is dead. The only stars left touring anymore, besides you two, are Cornell and the Lunt. And they have a combined age of 1,006. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard. What am I going to do? For starters, you can marry me. I've got tons of cash, no one to spend it on. Except for a cat with a thyroid problem. It's getting quite large. I had friends in last night. They thought I had a pet Holstein. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, would you be serious? I am being serious. I have to build a barn. <laughs> Charlotte, listen to me. I'm not very good at this. I can't lie to you the way most men do and tell your cheeks remind me of damask. I don't know what the hell damask is. <laughs> but you really deserve better than this. Let me pamper you a little. Take you on a cruise anywhere you want in the world. Rochester, Schenectady, <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> oh, Richard. You do make me happy. Good. You deserve it. And frankly, so do I. I'm tired of living alone. What about George? I don't want to live with him. Richard. <laughs> Charlotte, I do love you so much. You're all I think about anymore. Oh, Richard. Charlotte. George! George! Uh, how do you do? Richard Maynard, lawyer to the stars. Yeah, Paul Singer, schlepper for two stars. <laughs> Where's George? Oh, I don't know. He's in the dressing room, I think. He's not there. Well, is there something the matter, Paul? No. Oh. Paul. Uh, there's nothing the matter. I just have a question uh, for George. Well, when you find him, tell him I'll be up for the morning. Richard is taking me out to lunch. Right. Uh, have a nice time. We intend to. Thank you. George? Ethel! What? Where is George? He's right behind me. Stop! Give me those serial hats! No! They need letting out. You are, they are far too snug, and you look <coughs> ridiculous. They're my hats! George! And your backside looks like a waterman. Nobody <laughs> asked you! George! Give this to me! Give me my serial hats! You can't see those hats! Give them to me! Your ears need fixing. Oh, what you done? It's no wonder this company is going down the toilet. I have some bad news. Bad news? In this company, the House of Usher. 
Tori, get down! <laughs> I think you'd better sit down. Sit down? Why? Because I'll tremble. My knees will wobble uncontrollably. What is a stage convention, you idiot? Go to the cheapest melodrama. George Eileen is pregnant! Detroit, and now she's pregnant. That's a lie. So you didn't sleep with her? It was Cincinnati. I <laughs> think that's irrelevant. Oh my God. Charlotte's gonna kill me. Yeah, I know. She'll make my life a living hell, even more than usual. Oh God, what can I do? I don't know. Run. Think of something, you <laughs> idiot. That's what you're paid for. All right, let me think. Okay, now listen. Uh, Eileen can have the baby in the country with a relative like an aunt or something. But we won't tell Charlotte ever. And, and, and then when the baby is, is, is older, you can visit them in the country and, and have picnics. And then, oh, just wait, wait. And then when the baby is left hand, you could cast it as a page in Much Ado About Nothing and put on shows together. That's it. It's perfect. It has to work. I need help here, not Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Sorry. Look, why don't you just talk to Eileen? Eileen. Poor kid. I'd better go see her. You'll have to hurry. She has a doctor's appointment at noon. Already? Yeah, they have to do a test or something. A test? What test? I don't know. A pregnancy test? I have no idea. So she might not be pregnant? She says she's positive. But she only thinks she's pregnant? She's positive. She thinks. Christ almighty, Paul, is she pregnant? I don't time? know, George. I didn't examine her. <laughs> Strange. 
interest item has appeared in this week's variety. Charlotte? And I think you should read it, George. Out loud, because I might be having another one of my menopausal hallucinations. Charlotte? <laughs> read it, George, near the top. I'm waiting. Box office biggie, Bobo and Burns. I know that. Dear Charlotte, I am carrying your husband's piles. Piles? Child! I am carrying your husband's piles! Right. I thought you should know Eileen. Well? Oh, Charlotte, I made a grievous mistake. Can you please forgive me? No, George. I cannot forgive you. You betrayed me. sucking business. <laughs> well, yes, it must be important. It's not even noon and you're already up for the day? All right. All right, yes. Yes, I'm listening. Well, yes, of course I know they started filming yesterday. I've got a little Ronald Coleman doll I've been sticking pins into. <laughs> what? what? Oh, my God. I don't believe it. Henry, if this is a joke, I'll kill you. I swear it. What happened? Shh. Oh, my God. I don't believe it. Oh, Henry, I love you. What is it? Would you shut up? Yes. Yes, of course I'll be here. Today? Right. Yes. I'll call you right away. Well? We're back in business. Charlotte! Charlotte! Get in here! What are you saying? You're looking at a star, my boy. Gauge your fill and disregard the radiance. Squint if you have to. Oh, what happened? Yesterday on the set of the Twilight and the Scarlet Pimpernel, Ronald Coleman made his first entrance. He fell down the flight of stairs and broke his legs. Oh my God! <laughs> 
Oh, he's got to be around here somewhere. Oh, probably, yeah. This is for you. It's for Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> Dear Ross, don't worry about me. I'll be back in a few days. Love, Dad. A few days? George! Oh, no, of course, I can't find your father anywhere. Oh, well, maybe he's still at the hotel. Oh, oh. What happened to the lights? What's going on now? I paid the electric bill. I don't know what the hell it is. So I 
did you come back? I came back to see my parents. Is that a crime? And no, I didn't know you were here. I wouldn't have shown up. Well, I'm sorry. I'm I'll put a sign on the throughway. Paul and Buffalo, rouse, turn back, save yourself. Okay, <laughs> just forget about it. Hey, that's fine with me. Fine! 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 fine. fine. Get it over with. Don't bother. I've been privatized a hundred times. I know it's backwards. Besides, that's what I have to blame Sybil. She was our mean took the day off. We don't know where she is. Why don't you blame me for that, too? I wasn't blaming you. Yeah, I suppose I was the one that got her pregnant. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, fine. 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 <laughs> Two adjoining balconies, posh hotel, soft fronts. I know the play. The lights come up. For the record, I hate this. I swore I'd never set foot on a stage again. Breaking a bow here. The lights come up. Ellie, Ellie, dear, do come out. It is so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute. Elliot comes out. Your father plays Elliot. No kidding. He always plays Elliot. Daddy played Elliot since I was five years old. He looks at the view. Not so bad, huh? It's heavenly look at the lights of that yacht reflected on the water. Oh dear, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Aren't you? Yes, of course I am. Tremendously <clears throat> happy. Oh darling, just to think here we are, you and I, married. Yes, things have come to a pretty pass, huh? <laughs> Don't laugh at me. You mustn't be blase about honeymoons, darling. Just because this is your second. Oh, that's silly. Have I annoyed you by saying that? Just a smidgen. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kiss me.
Shakespeare. <laughs> Dear Ronnie, did you ever play Hamlet or Henry V or Falstaff? If sack and sugar be a sin, then God help the wicked. If to be old and merry be a fault, then many an old host I know is damned. That is writing, Ronnie. That is glory on the tongue. It is gold on the canvas. It is not the movies. It is not television. It is the theater. The theater! <coughs> Schedule of performances, matinee, private line. Wrong. Cyrano. Ah, she got it wrong again. Charlotte. Dear sweet Charlotte, she has the brain of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I'll miss her. The pitter patter of her size twelves. <laughs> the dainty whine of her voice nagging at me like an open cold sore. <laughs> oh, she returned to the midnight hour when you gave birth to our only child. I can still see you lying there on the table like a tuna on a hook. <laughs> I can still hear your dulcet voice cutting through the night. Please, she cried. Please give me the devil roll. <laughs> oh, well. It's too late now. I can't even tell you now that I love you. Take care of yourself, Charlotte. It shall be written on his tombstone. He made one mistake. One lousy, innocent mistake. And they kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
pretty much what I predicted. <laughs>
This is serial shit. Yeah, I know that. Well, we're doing private lives. Our not book. It's serial. It was changed. Well, that's George's handwriting. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. Well, why would he change the schedule? Oh, who in the hell knows why George does anything? <laughs>
Then you reply. Not so bad. Yes! There's a new one! It must be Colombian. <laughs> Yes, Elliot. Oh, um, the costume party. Um, but darling, 
some great man, and like a creeping vine on the top tree, crawl upward, for I cannot stand alone. No, thank you. No, thank you, Elliot. But to sing, to laugh, to dream. No, thank you, Elliot. That is enough. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Can't you see that I don't have the slightest idea of what's going on? You don't think we're lava land 
at the lights of that yacht reflected on the <laughs> Excuse me, please, but I'm looking for my son, Eddie, who has a tendency to dress up as Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> i 
minute, George. Charlotte, I know how disappointed you are about the movie, and so am I, but, but is it really that important? 45 seconds. Oh, stop that. You can't leave now. You certainly can't go off with Richard. He would die prematurely. He would bore you to death. Well, at least he's stable, mentally. What good is that if you're bored, for God's sake? Fifteen seconds. Stop that. Charlotte, listen to me. Use your brain. Think. Just think of all the fun we have together. Rambling from town to town like minor royalty. Signing autographs. Doing interviews. What? You'll be laughing for months thinking about my entrances, Cyrano. And think of all those people out there. So much joy to every week as Amanda and Roxanne, Eliza Doolittle and Lady Frackner. You're an actress, Charlotte. It's in your veins. Why, if you were caught in the spotlight of a runaway train, you'd break into a time step. It's a gift to be that reckless and insane. who are living through you, imagining what they can be in your voice. Are you really going to turn your back on all of them just because you lost a measly role in some film? Oh, George, you give me such a pain. <laughs> I know I do. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I do love you, Charlotte. I haven't the faintest idea why, but <laughs> the thought of living without you terrifies me. I'm sure it's just me, but 
I've never been gagged in locked in a class before. <laughs> oh, Howard, that was a mistake, I promise. I know, I know, Roz, but you see, something else happened. I, I met this girl and kind of- Howard, honey, it's a cat's lady. Oh, isn't it great? Eileen? <laughs> okay, all right, they'll be right there. You didn't tell them yet, did you? Uh, I was just, you know, starting to. Howard? It's kind of a funny story, actually. We, uh, we met at the hospital. I mean, I mean, we didn't meet at the hospital. I'm going to say high school, right here in Buffalo, if you can believe that. Yes. Anyway, we got to talking and was like, my God, she's so normal. <laughs> so we went to the cafeteria for some jello and spam. <laughs> and then it just happened. It was like magic. We sort of knew. You know what the best part is? Tell them. Tell them. You go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, she wants to start a family right away. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> children. My children. Eileen. Horace. Howard. Horace. Howard. <clears throat> Speaking for myself and Mrs. Hay, perhaps you would do us the great honor making us the godparents to your firstborn. Oh, and remember, the first one always comes early. <laughs> Jeez, thanks. I don't like that, Doris. I really would. So would I. Oh, that's our cab. we got to get going. Oh. Goodbye. Good luck, young man. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry. Don't worry. Um, Oh, we'll be fine. There's a low pressure area over the whole northeast, so we should be seeing sunny skies. Oh,
to play Cyrano. I suffer for my art. Oh, please. Wait, I'll prove it to you. Charlotte! No, no, I'm gone! No, no, really, George, quite a Fight you, coward. I despise weak people. The first thing we do is kill all the lawyers. Yeah! Make one move and Granny gets it. No! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Please. 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 